Hello everyone. Welcome to next session of our SAP basis training. In this particular session, we will be discussing about transactional processing. How SAP will handle the transactional processing. As we seen in our previous sessions, this screen explains how a database transaction is being executed. Let's say whenever a user is executing any transactions, let's say for example here you have the output to the screen, then based on the input from the customer you have an output. Here it could be possible that a database transaction being executed. So every transaction which is executed by the user needs to be saved in the SAP. Now you may think how SAP will handle the issues. Let's assume that when you go to for example uh, different SAP business transactions, let's say you create a sales order. So you will key in different informations based on the informations you will have another information which is popped in and you will key in this information. So once you save the information only this particular uh, transaction is being uh, written into the database. Similar to your Oracle. So if you are an Oracle database administrator then you know how a commit statement is being executed. Same fashion it's not exactly like Oracle but just to give you a comparison you can also think like Oracle. So once the transaction is being executed then the specific user will save the changes then the actual data will be written into your ABAP system. However, it is also possible that specific transaction was terminated. Let's say the user is not able to complete the entire transaction. In that kind of scenarios, you will have a rollback. SAP automatically will roll back to the previous state for the specific record. That is the way SAP transaction or transfer to database transactions. Let us log into our system and see how many work process, dialog work process we have in the system which we are used before the ECC system. So let's log in. To the ECC system. Okay, in order to check the number of work process or in order to check the status of work process, we will use the transaction SM50, SM50. It will give you all the available work process. Here you can see we have 0 to 9, that is 10 dialog work process running in the systems. This is number of work process. Here you can see the type whether it's a dialogue or update in queue background spool or update to work process the pid means each work process will have its own program id this id is referred in most of the places like uh, even in the os level this id will be used to identify what is the work process which has been uh, related to this specific or what is the processes which is running on this specific work process then here you can see the status now you can see all the work processes uh, waiting except there is only one dialog process which says running okay and the, uh, here if it is waiting for some reason then it will give you the waiting reason or it's waiting for the rfc status or it waiting for to release the lock entries so there is a lot of uh, reasons you will find it here so why it is 
uh, waiting at the moment it is blank that means it's waiting for or waiting to accept new uh, request to process the required documentation or required data here you can see uh, restart it says uh, it's all available for uh, restart that means it, it started it's running here you can see errors dumps you can also see here there is one dump that means if there is errors coming because of this specific work process then you can see it here in some cases if let's say for example poorly written an ABAP code it can have a lot of short dumps and you exit trying to execute in background it will create a lot of short dumps in that cases then you will be able to see the dumps how many dumps it's creating then you have uh, uh, semaphore this will come to later semaphore then we have cpu what is the cpu load and the time and also the report the report is for example in this scenario uh, you can see the username trainer one is logged into the client um, 001 and this is the report it's running at the moment we are the trainer one which is running this specific report so this report is nothing but this SM50, also a program which has been run. So you can see that. So you can see all the active work process also in this SM50. And here you can see the action, what it is doing. For example, it's uh, reading tables or updating tables like this. Here you will be able to find which table it's reading or updating. So in SM50, you will be able to find all this information next let us see how the log management work in sap this also we have seen already in our previous course so let's review and see how the log management is working in the sap system so in general if you see in any database if you are going to edit some content of the specific table then that specific content needs to be logged for other users meaning it needs to be locked so that the other user will not edit the same content of your database. So for this, SAP have lock management. So lock management, basically a table which is available in the main memory of the SAP system. If you know Oracle, Oracle have a locking mechanism or all the database have its own locking mechanism, however, here the lock management which we are talking about is within the sap system itself so you don't need to use the database lock management systems so in sap main memory there will be a table internal table which maintain all the lock entries in your sap system so let's assume one user want to update a specific record in that specific time, for example, if the dialog user is trying to access or trying to read or modify a specific table, then it will trigger the lock mechanism using NQ work process. This we have seen it before. The NQ work process is the process which is used for lock mechanism. And remember one thing, you have only one NQ work process for the entire SAP systems that logically it should be like that otherwise it is not going to work yeah so a lock mechanism should be managed by one central place so what happens is if there is a lock is required by any work process then the request is sent to nq work process then the nq work process will check with the locking table whether this specific record is already locked or not even in the locking mechanism also you don't need to uh, lock the entire table or entire record there will be key field which will be specified as main field which needs to be locked for example user master in user master you have a lot of information so you don't need to lock all the table entries so it does not mean we need to lock all the informations which is available in the specific screen.
so you will have some key fields that will be entered in the lock table so first what it will check the nq will check whether this specific table is already been locked or specific record is already been locked or not if it is locked then it will send back the message to the specific uh, work process which is requesting it says okay this has been already been locked or this will lock and it will give the information and the user can do the specific changes this is one way of doing the lock mechanism let's assume the locking is required from a different applications instance where you do not have an nq work process then what is going to happen as we know the message server is the common communication interface between all application as well as the central instance so in this case for example this dialog work process is requesting for a change in some specific table so this dialog process will tell ABAP dispatcher that it is requesting for one lock entry. Then the ABAP dispatcher will in turn contact the ABAP message server. Message server will contact the dispatcher where the NQ work process is available. Then it will tell the NQ work process this particular entry where it's marked this as green needs to be locked. Then this will specific thing will be locked then it will allow the user to edit so it once it is marked for locked then the user will be edit this record this record could be more than one table uh, please remember whenever you go to one specific sap transaction the transaction does not need to be in one table that means all the information which is in the specific transaction does not need to be in one specific table it could be more than one table this is internally determined what are all the entries which needs to be locked here so once that is locked then the user will be able to do the changes once the change is done and saved then automatically sends the message then the nq will release this specific lock we could also see in our SAP system how the locking mechanism works. So let's do one thing. Let's edit our user master. We are in our SAP system. Go to the transaction code SU3. SU3 is the transaction code which will allow you to edit your own personal information in the user master. So I am in SU3 screen. Let me make this one as small. And I will open one more session in the same system and keep it side by side. Here I will try to edit this particular user. The user which we logged in is trainer01. So SU03 will allow all the user to edit their own personal information of course you cannot add any roles or any privileges you just mm, edit your own information so i will go to the transaction su01 this transaction is used to create or modify user let me try to modify the same user trainer01 so i will go here to the change mode now you can see the maintenance of user trainer 01 is locked by trainer 01 of course there is a little bit of confusion in the names because we are using our own user to edit so now you can see this specific user trainer 01 is being locked by trainer 01 okay so that means only one person can edit this record trainer 01 so now let me go to the transaction to see how this is being locked for this you can go to menu tools administration monitoring and you can see yes some 12 lock entries this is a very simple screen but it's quite useful screen it's been like this for so many years it's never been changed here you can see 
table name if you want to, to search for one specific table you can type in the table name and you can search for specific table or lock argument lock argument is what field is being locked for example there is a one lock argument uh, which needs to be searched across the table then it may be useful then you can also filter by client and also by username you can specify the username or you can simply put star here let's put star and execute when you say list then you can see this is the lock entry you can see client 001 user who is locking the entry is trainer 01 this time this is exclusive lock e means exclusive lock there is different type of locks which is available if you press f1 then you will be able to see the detail of lock uh, method what is this e means and this as you know every field sap have a, a very good uh, help where you can see the detail you can see a exclusive lock that is e the shared lock that means shared uh, between other users then you have exclusive but cumulative lock then you also have optimistic lock these are all used for different purposes this is again determined by the system itself so we don't explicitly specify what lock uh, should be used in the standard transactions and you can see which table is being locked and you can see the lock argument lock argument here is client as well as the username yeah, the trainer 01 then you have the user count for example if you take this specific table you wanted to see well, how many entries are in this specific table you can put the table name and say execute then it will give all the table name like this you can filter it okay the reason why we need to filter it if you are in a live system in a productive system in a bigger sap productive system you will have thousands of lock entries uh, you know it's it's popping up and it goes off after some seconds so this will keep happening so, so it's quite uh, difficult to see a lock entry in a productive system in a live environment so that time you need to use all this filter to find out exactly what you are looking for so this is the way to find the lock entries this also as a basis consultant this also one of your daily tasks to check any uh, old locks which we call it deadlocks it is possible some user uh, logged some record and uh, they did not log out or they did not um, complete the transaction properly then this will be lying there like this then nobody will be able to edit this particular record in that cases we need to find out all the lock entries for example let's say more than 24 hours or more than 48 hours and analyze these lock entries why these lock entries are there in most of the cases we simply delete these lock entries we can also check whether this user is using this particular transaction or user is doing something so we to see that you have a, a transaction code sm04 if you go to slash and sm Zero 04 you can see how many users are logged into the system you can see ddaic which is standard user and uh, acp jsf it's for the uh, for the java user this are all the standard users and you can also see our user training zero okay so now we go to sm12 so we have this lock entries now let me go back and let me refresh again now you can see the lock entry is gone so now we seen our how the lock entry works in your sap system next let us look into update process how the update happens in sap system so whenever you are executing any transaction inserting any record or changing an existing record then the update process happens let's say for example we want to update the record from this specific application server from the dialog instance so the sap gui user will log into the abap dispatcher the dispatcher will go to a 
dialog work process which will request for the update so before updating we need to go to the edit mode so you need to change something even if you are inserting that particular record needs to be locked so first it will request for an nq okay there is an nq uh, request is sent to the message server message server in turn contact the ABAP dispatcher then the nq work process will place the lock entry in the lock tables so once the lock entry is done then your nq work process will give the feedback then it will request for update that is v1 update then it will again go to the dispatcher it will uh, trigger the update work process to do the specific update that means the changes whichever is done will be written to the database please remember the changes which will be run, done during this process after the commit it is not necessary to be a synchronous change it is generally an asynchronous change it means that you know thousands of users will be working in the sap system so each transaction cannot be committed or cannot be written in the database in a synchronous mode so it works in the asynchronous mode by the way when i am talking about here that it will say it's a v1 update there is two type of update there will be one called v1 update another one is v2 update we also seen this in our uh, work process before that two type of update work process available v1 and uh, v2 v1 is important update very important update that means it's very critical update and v2 is non-critical update so we have two type of updates available so once the update is done into the specific uh, database then it will release the lock entry from the lock table so this is how the update is done in the sap system so let's go to the system and check how this looks like or how we can monitor the updates so now we are in our sap system first let's go to sm50 and see the update work process here you can see update and update 2 this is v1 and v2 different work process for both so we can use either v1 or v2 work process meaning to say that we don't explicitly define which update work process to be used or what kind of update need to be done this will be determined by sap itself we don't explicitly define this which update to be used we can also monitor the updates in your sap system this also sometime will be done by uh, basis consultant or in general it could also be done by functional consultant uh, let's see how to monitor the update first uh, go to tools then administration monitor then you have update sm13 here you can see cancel to be updated v1 executed v2 executed that means successfully completed and v2 is it. we already seen what is v1 and v2 and we can also see all you can also filter by client by user in general we do monitor the cancelled updates uh, because some of the financial documentation which is cancelled in the middle which needs to be checked and it needs to be closed if in 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 case this is not completed properly then this is i'm going to have some financial impact so this needs to be checked and closed in some cases so this also sometime it's an uh, audit compliance or audit requirement in some cases so this the cancelled updates will be monitored so if you simply select here select your selection criteria and execute it then you will be able to see the updates which is presently running or presently happening in the systems at the moment we don't have any user in the system that's the reason you don't see it you will see the user and the what is the transaction code which is presently been executed by this user to do the specific update that you can see it here and you can generally uh, monitor 
the cancel the update because this is quite important or you think in case this update is not completed you can also repeat the update and uh, to do this generally we don't do that because uh, we don't know whether this specific user create an another record to update the same document let's say for example if it is a sales order which is did not happen a sales order does not stop in the middle anyway just for an example so if it stopped in the middle and uh, he couldn't complete it he may create another one sales order and complete his uh, business requirement so the previous sales order cannot be executed so we are not supposed to do this update so basis is again very critical you have to be very careful what we are executing and we can also delete the updates and please make sure that uh, is the right um, entry which you are deleting in general we don't delete any entries from here because these are all very important information which needs to be kept in sap okay this is about update how it works in sap next let us see printing how the printing works how the work process for printing is being used so we have a specific work process for spool which is marked as yes in order to handle the printers we can print any document from sap directly to a printer there is different kind of printers available you have uh, uh, printers which is directly connected to an sap system through os normal uh, like unix or server based printers and you will also have print servers so sap can send the output directly to the print server and this print server can send the output to specific printer wherever we are requesting so before you print anything of course we need to configure these printers in sap uh, printer configuration is an another topic we have in our coming sessions how to configure the printers so now we are just seeing how the work process being used so we will come to that printer configuration in our later stage it's actually a bigger topic in our sap basis course so whenever you print any request the print request for example the sap gui user is trying to print something from this dialog work process so it is going to dispatcher dispatcher allows the dialog work process is trying to print so when it prints or when this user print any data this will create a spool request the spool request is nothing but it's a collection of your output so this output will be created or collected and created as a spool request this pool request will have your printer detail what are all the page needs to printer on all relevant information which is required to print this document this will be saved in temsec this is temporary sequential database where all the output will be saved here so once the spool request is created then this spool work process will pick up this spool request and send to the output device so that is the work of this spool work process this is again done in first in first out basis this temsec also can be monitored and can be managed from your sap systems this is quite simple let's have a look into our systems and see how the spool is being managed So now we are in our SAP system. If we go to SM50, this is our spool work process SPO. So let's go to a program. Let's try to execute a program. Let's go to SA38. SA38 is a transaction code to run an ABAP program. So there is a program called RS Param. This is basically a program which we use mainly in our SAP basis to see the profile parameters. So I will put the program name here and simply execute. Yeah, or press F8. I'll say execute again. Now you can see this is the output of our program. So if you want to print this information, 
you simply click on this print icon or say control p then a pop-up will come to select the output device as i said before you print you need to configure the output device you need to configure the printer in our case we did not do anything because this is a fresh sap system however there will be always a standard printer configured in your sap system that is lp01 just for testing purpose we will use this one anyway this is not going to be printed anywhere because we did not configure this printers properly okay let's say continue then it's asking for the format of the paper in general when you create a device uh, you need to define the paper format and so on so i'll say okay now you can see here it is created spooled request number 8902 without immediate output so it created the spooled request without immediate output that means it's not going to immediately print in the uh, printer this also we can configure it we will come and see this later how this has been done so to monitor the spooled request or to manage the spooled request, you have two different transactions, SP02 and SP01. SP02 is basically used to manage your own spooled request. SP01 is used by basis administrator to manage the entire spool in your SAP system. So let's go to SP02 and see whether this specific spooled request is being created or not, 8902 slash n sp02 you can see 8902 is created if you again say print then it will start printing immediate printing or you can also uh, display the spool request you simply click here this says uh, so many pages you can see this is the output which is created so you can see this kind of a preview Okay, this is the spool okay and you can go to the next transaction sp01 where you can see the spool request by request number or with range or you can also uh, see by users now we are in train 01 let's say execute and you can see our spool request so this is how we manage the spool request uh, this is how the spool work process being used let us see background process background work process we see in dialog work process when you want to execute some transaction then you will log into sap gui and execute transactions we also seen how the background work process works so in background work process you can schedule jobs or you can also execute jobs in background so you may think why do i need to execute jobs in background it is possible some of the job which you may execute in your sap system is resource intensive jobs that means it requires a lot of resource so it is not possible that you execute these programs in the foreground mode that means you execute and you need to wait for a long time and the bigger system we will not allow the user to execute this foreground for a specific time for more than some specific time that's simply because if you allow that then that user will be blocking that specific dialog work process so it may not work like that so in that scenarios you advise the user or we recommend the user to execute the specific program in background mode so the background mode when you are not disturbing anybody then you simply execute this program so these programs can be scheduled uh, before or you can also schedule this program on, on periodic basis uh, for example you want to run some settlement of uh, some fi document which needs to be executed every week then it's possible in basis also and we do schedule some of the background jobs for example locking of users or uh, comparing profiles like this we will also schedule a lot of background jobs which needs to be executed in the night because in the daytime you cannot execute these programs so like this you can schedule the background jobs in sap systems so this is quite easy then you can also run it for periodic basis or you can also run it for or you can also use it for 
some of the jobs which may require uh, quite long time it will run for quite long time so instead of running it the dialog work process you can run it in the background work process let's go to our system and see how we can schedule a background work process or background job and how we can monitor this we are in our sap system if we go to sm50 so we can see how many background work process we have we have one two three background work process so at the moment uh, we have three work background work process that means it can execute three parallel jobs and in the same time so let's take our the same um, program which we used let's see is a 38 go to rs param here if you see here we executed it in the foreground okay in general most of the uh, sap transactions the output you can execute in background most of means not all because uh, for example some system related transaction code you cannot execute in background so in, in many of the business transactions you will have an option to execute in the background mainly for the reports so if i go here program you can see execute in background of course we need to specify a printer name here so this background job also will create a spool let's say for the specific program is designed to create a spool then it will create a spool request okay let's say continue uh, I will simply say immediate here. We will come back to this later in the session of background job scheduling. I'll just that means it we scheduled it to run it immediately. Okay, or as para. So if you wanted to check this specific job whether it is running or it's completed or let's say the status of this one, you go to the transaction uh, SM37. I will say slash n SM37. Then simply execute it. You can see this is the program which we run it's finished if you select this one and check the job log then you can see it's started like this and it's finished uh, this program is not designed to create a spool request in the background that's the reason you do not have a spool request generally some of the programs which is designed to have an output on the spool then you will able to see some spools maybe we can check some another program which may be running in our system and just put star that means to execute all the programs yeah you can see here let's say for example this sld uh, collector this is for solution manager you can see the symbol here that means it's a spool i select one program and simply select spool and open this now you can see this is the output of this specific spool yeah. This again can be printed also. Let's say if it is automatically printed, also possible, or it can also create the spool. And if you can if you want to print it, you can still print it. So this is about background work process. With this, we are coming to end of this particular session. Thank you very much for listening. I will see you in the next session.